Hi, I'm Deidre Palmer, President of the National Assembly of the Uniting Church in Australia. In July this year, the National Assembly meeting of the Uniting Church adopted a resolution entitled For the Whole Creation. For the Whole Creation strongly affirms our long-term commitment to and advocacy for the healing and renewal of creation. It builds on an earlier statement, For the Sake of the Planet, in which we declare the Uniting Church's commitment to the environment arises out of the Christian belief that God, as the creator of the universe, calls us into a special relationship with the creation, a relationship of mutuality and interdependence, which seeks the reconciliation of all creation with God. The foundational document of the Uniting Church, The Basis of Union, expresses this as the very heart of the Church's mission. In paragraph three, the basis declares that God in Christ has given to all people in the Church the Holy Spirit as a pledge and foretaste of that coming reconciliation and renewal, which is the end in view for the whole creation. Our participation in God's mission of the reconciliation and renewal of creation has seen us engage in many expressions of hope in action. We have taken action on climate change by divesting from fossil fuels, investing in renewable energy sources and reducing our own carbon footprint. We have repeatedly advocated to our government to put in place policies that shift us away from fossil fuels and towards renewable energy and to support the people on the front lines of climate change. The Assembly Agency Uniting World is involved in partnering with Pacific churches to highlight the impacts of climate change in that region. I was recently in Fiji, where many coastal communities will have to be relocated because of rising sea levels over the next couple of years. Their cyclone season, which used to be from November to April, is now being experienced from October to May. Our sisters and brothers in Pacific nations are calling for us to advocate for a stronger global response to climate change. We know that small changes can make a difference to the health of our planet including our oceans, which have been severely impacted by tons of plastics. I was heartened in a recent visit to Vanuatu to see the banning of single-use plastic bags and a discouragement of the use of plastic straws. Here in Australia, in congregations, schools and agencies, we see many expressions of hope in action. I'm encouraged by local congregations' commitments to renewable energy including the installation of solar panels on their properties. Our prophetic witness against pollution in one of our synods has seen us oppose a nuclear waste dump being located in the Flinders Ranges on the land of the Adnamatna people. Hope in action is also seen in the custodianship of the land that our first peoples have been exercising for thousands of years. I've recently walked on country with Sean Wheatra, a Nurunjeri man. He and other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have a deep spiritual connection to the land. Sean and other Congress leaders encourage us as second peoples to see the land through the stories and connection that our first peoples live and breathe. Reverend Denise Champion is a Uniting Church deacon and an Adnamatna woman. In her book, Yata Wandata, she calls us to listen to the earth. She says we are being presented, both first and second peoples, with the opportunity to follow a new path that reconciles and heals. To do that, she says, we need to be able to sing together, sit down together, eat together, to learn to live together in peace and tell stories, allowing this land to speak to us and through us. In the past decades, we have become more intensely aware of the interconnectedness of the whole of creation. Unfortunately, some of this awareness has come because of the threat we see facing our own existence as humankind. 
rather than out of our deep love and nurturing of creation. Echo theologians have done much to remind us that God deeply loves the whole creation. In his book, Ecology at the Heart of Faith, Dennis Edwards says, the spirit is the loving companion to every creature and the midwife to the birth of the new. The spirit is with all creatures in their finitude, their death and incompletion, holding each suffering creature in redemptive love and drawing each into an unforeseeable eschatological future in the divine life. I look forward to being in conversation with all of you who are committed to living out our hope in action in all of creation.